Hello, Dr. Senege here from Accra, Ghana. Today I will showcase the way I do my routine fecal vitrectomy for retinal detachment. This is uncomplicated retinal detachment because there's hardly any noticeable PVR. My judgment to determine whether I need an uh, encircling band in combination with the normal vitrectomy will depend on the degree of PVR the location of the break, the number of breaks and how far they are apart from each other. Also, if I am not able to locate the break during pre-op assessment, that will mean that I have to put a circling band. Once the patient is above 50, I usually combine it with fecal massification. I always insert IOL prior to the vitrectomy. I know some people prefer doing it otherwise, but putting it after uh, vitrectomy can be quite challenging and also I always end up destroying the posterior capsule by accident so I normally try to um, as much as possible put the IOL before I start vitrectomy. Usually I would have started core vitrectomy to debug the vitreous a little bit before I go to the posterior but in this case there is pre-existing PVD so I don't need to do that so I'm trying to trim above the bullas so that the traction can be relieved and allow the bullos to retract. So I have started indenting, trying to expose the vitreous. Uh, the way you indent will actually help you to see the vitreous. Otherwise, you can be cutting just above or below vitreous. So you have to really move your indentation such a way that you can expose the vitreous. One of the best ways to see the vitreous is you look at the side of the indentation. Usually the vitreous is more visible beside the indentation and of course you can also move it up and down to expose the vitreous. I also engage the vitreous by sucking it like I'm inducing PVD and then cut. Wherever I'm not sure, I'll just stain with Tramsinolone. Here I'm converting the tear with the anterior flap into a hole. One of the disadvantages of putting a lens before doing the vitrectomy is that you may have a situation where you may not be looking through the lens, especially at the periphery and that can be giving you two uh, focuses and you have to be very careful. I'm now marking the bricks with diatomy for easy identification. Putting chandelier, although I have a very good assistant that does indentation. Here I'm looking for a small tiny brick that I saw when I was doing the vitrectomy. I should have marked it immediately when I saw it. Also whilst doing the indentation, I move my indentation up and down to be able to expose the small tiny bricks that are covered with flap. Here I'm applying the atomy so that I can see it very well. So in situation like this where the bricks are at the periphery, I will prefer I do retinotomy for my airfree exchange. I will choose an area where there are no visible blood vessels, about 3-4 dicks diameter from the dicks, preferably at the site where the primary break is. Very important at the nasal site so that in case there's a bleeding it doesn't go under the fovea. That's very important. I like doing my laser under air. Uh, it gives me a wider view but the downside is visibility. So long as you can see clearly, you have a better way of doing your laser under N. And also you have to be careful, the laser mark doesn't show that easily compared to silicon oil. In any case, in straightforward cases like this, I prefer to put gas, either SF6 or C3F8 instead of silicon oil. Another advantage of the trucker system, I can exchange the chandelier with my infusion system for superior illumination. After putting laser around the main break, I normally do 360 degrees uh, laser barrage. Uh, this is just in case there's a tiny break that I miss, it should be covered. My retinoctomy will be the last to put laser around after the last drainage usually. So in this case, I've decided to put C3F8. I debated with my assistant for some time, but we all decided to put C3F8 uh, because we wanted the gas to stay in a little bit longer. Because the retinotomy is posterior, 
face down for a few hours is just enough for it to work. Whilst my assistant pump in the C3F8, I put a vent to flush out all the air. Almost getting to the end, we close all the sclerotomy and whatever is left in, we top up by injecting it into the eye. So at this point, I flush out all the viscolytic in the anterior chamber and then get the correct consistency of the eye. I inject dexamethasone gentamicin at the end of the procedure and then I close. That's the end. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, Dr. Senyaja.